How you doing? Uh, this is my first YouTube video, so please bear with me if um, things don't seem smooth or it seems like I'm um, just you know, trying to figure out how stuff uh, should go. Uh, but today's project uh, is going to be turning this box uh, into a vacuum chamber in preparation for a um, project I'm going to be working on this year that I plan to do several videos for, uh, which is making um, costumes for me, my wife, and my kids. Seeing here is the Halo costumes that I created in 2012 for me and my kids. Out of EVA foam, I went through a lot of different methods and stuff, and so now I'm trying to up my game, you know, make the costumes even cooler. I'm going for a World of Warcraft uh, type uh, genre for the costumes, mm -hmm. and so one of the things I've been, uh, when I was looking online at how to do resin, I came across one lady. Uh, who mentioned that the resin cures better without the air bubbles if it's in a vacuum chamber. Now she waited until she had enough money to buy a vacuum chamber. For me, I said, why not make one? So I went out to Walmart. You can go out to any store and buy a plastic container. I actually got lucky because this particular container is a Ziploc container and actually already has a um, foam lining to help uh, make this container airtight uh, secure. Uh, the other thing that's nice is because I'm dealing with uh, trays that are not uh, very much bigger than this container, I don't need a huge uh, plastic container, uh, which could be a problem because if you once you start creating the vacuum, you could end up crushing your, uh, your container in on itself if it's not reinforced correctly. Um, so for this one, planning to just do a simple um, one-way valve system, and I should be able to pry open a corner to release the air, so I'm not planning to put in a, uh, release, a release valve system, although that may change in the future. Who knows? Okay. Some of the stuff that you're going to need besides the plastic container, uh, like I said, originally I was going to build this myself with some some spare uh, PVC stuff that I had. Um, this was just going to be a one inch into a cap. I was going to cut the cap off. I got two of them. I was going to do a sandwich in through the uh, um, container. And then within here, I was going to do a uh, metal plate with holes drilled into it. Then I was going to take some rubber gloves that I got that I don't really use because they're too tight. I was going to cut a hole, uh, or flap, the uh, one-way flap, and, you know, basically construct my own uh, one-way uh, check valve. Now, the only reason why I know it's called a one-way check valve, because I didn't know this prior to going to uh, Lowe's, um, is because, it, you know, like most guys, we don't know what we're looking for until we find it. Uh, most, you know, women can attest to that. But uh, while I was at the store with my daughter, we were walk, walking around waiting for um, uh, someone to assist us as I was looking for different parts and connections. And uh, eventually I actually came across a PVC pipe uh, pre-constructed one-way valve check system. And as you can see on here, um, and you can see it in the video, but there's an arrow showing that the air can only flow one way. And you can test that just by blowing through it. So one way you can blow, the other way you can't. And so I'm going to use this, making sure I got the arrow in the right direction. And I bought an elbow uh, as opposed to a straight um, piece of uh, PVC pipe. Because when I do get this affixed up into the lid, underneath, when I get it into the lid, the elbow will actually help prevent the, um, the vacuum suction from pulling the whole uh, piece up and out through the, uh, through the plastic lid. Uh, so this will help secure it. The other thing you're going to need, um, what I, or at least what I'm going to use, to make sure that I've got a hole that fits snugly uh, around the, the uh, size of the elbow, the PVC elbow, I'm going to use a uh, wood drill bit that is the same size. So this is a one inch um, 
neck that fits into the hole here. I'm just going to use a one inch uh, wooden drill bit to drill my hole into the table here, or into the lid, not the table. <laughs> that would be bad. So, in order to do that, you know, you will need a drill. You don't want to do this by hand, although you could. You could either cut it with an uh, X-Acto knife, you can cut it with a regular knife. You could even get a hot uh, soldering iron and you could actually melt your way through the hole. Um, but because for expedient matters, I'm going to uh, just use the drill and drill this right through. Now, tighten my chuck here. Get that off to the side. Now, just because I have these two pieces sandwiched in the plastic here doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to have an airtight seal. Uh, for one, the surface right here, this is a textured type surface, um, so you're not going to get a nice, it's not a nice smooth surface, so it, uh, getting a tight seal just by sheer torque, uh, you know, in pressure of the, the uh, components, you're not going to get a seal. So, in order to do that, I'm going to need to seal it with something. Now, originally, I was going to use a glue gun. I picked up a new one. It's got this nice little uh, tip that uh, really reduces how much hot glue you get in the areas, but also gives you an extended reach to get into some of those type areas. You can get it at your uh, local craft store. It's only a couple bucks. But since I have a, another project, uh, that I'm, or site project, that I'm working on, which is I need to put this backing back onto here, uh, which has fallen off. The, the small tack welds that, that hold that on uh, have given way. And so what I'm going to do is use Gorilla Epoxy Glue uh, to adhere that. And since I'm going to do that, what I have left over, I'm going to use to seal the, uh, the hole around the, uh, to seal, to get an airtight seal around my fixtures. The good thing is, is the glue comes with a little cap, so you don't have to use all of this. So you use what you need, mix it, put it back on there, and save it for later. So before I mix the epoxy, because it, it sets in five minutes, and that may not seem like a long time, but, you know, I want to make sure I'm ready for it so I can get it on there, get it set. I'm going to just grab some scrap pieces of wood. I try not to throw my wood out. I try to keep as much of it as possible because you never know when it's going to come in handy. Before we get started, safety. Don't need gloves because I'm not planning on, on drilling through my own hand. Now, my drill bit here actually has a, a leveling bubble on it already. And so I'm just going to drill this as straight through as I can. Now there's a lip here. I don't want to get too close to the lip because I want, I don't want that bottom part getting in the way when I try to connect the two pieces. But I don't want to go too much in the center either. Because when the pressure comes through, or as I'm uh, vacuuming out the air, I don't want this little square to give way and, and it to collapse in. Okay. I'm done with that. I'm going to take my drill bit out. That way, if for some reason I accidentally press the trigger, it doesn't harm me. I'll see what I'm playing with. Alright, so now I have my hole and a whole bunch of plastic debris. Just quickly brush that off. Get the wood down. Okay, so the next thing, you know, we want to check the fit. Okay, and as I can tell, this fit is really tight. 
Alright, see, so it's just a little bit too small. But that's okay. That's what files are for. Do we have a check fit? Almost. Check fit. Gotta be careful. <laughs> there we go. That did the trick. And uh, all that kind of stuff later. Alright, so I now have the whole Now I was thinking like, you know, what is the best way to do this? And what I'm thinking is raising this up because there's a very tiny lip on the piece here. And so what I want to do when I mix this uh, epoxy, so I'm going to lay a tiny bit around the edge going through it, shove this through, hopefully that lip will help seal some and then I will get more around it. And then once that sets, then I'll flip it over and I'll add more on the top side and adhere the one-way check valve. So I'm putting this off to the side a little. And this kit comes with a little tiny popsicle stick. backwards. There's a little tiny slit and I didn't even see it. It will allow that to go the right way. Uh, one of the things I did forget to put on is gloves. So if you do this yourself, make sure you put gloves on. So we've got a little here. I'm using the plastic box or container that it came in because I really don't want to waste uh, something else that I have. Just mix it up. I can already smell it. thick enough, it's not drooping down the uh, side and, and onto my floor. And so while that's starting to set, I'm going to do the chair that I have and then we'll get back to this in five minutes. Okay, looking at this, it's only been like a minute or so, uh, it, it's got a nice thick band around it which is going to give me a really good seal once this fully hardens uh, or sets. Now. It says here that it sets in five minutes, but you want to read the directions because it's going to take more than that to actually cure. It says uh, clamp surfaces together for 30 minutes. Yeah, so 30 minutes is the is how long it takes for it to actually set. So. Five minutes is for it to set. Eventually, you know, just looking at it, and it's pretty thick. It's runny, or it's not runny. It's uh, a thick, kind of like a syrupy type uh, solution. So I'm going to let that sit for a little bit. I can take off these glasses. Um, I was going to use a, a tool that I picked up for some of the carving and, and uh, working with the clay and stuff to kind of shove that into the, um, the gap, but the, by pre-coating it uh, with excess and then sticking it in there and uh, getting this nice ring, I don't need to mess my tools up to uh, get that in there. And so I will be back in about 30 minutes. Okay. It's been
been over 30 minutes now, so I'm going to res in, you know, I should have had plenty of time to set up. Yeah, that's pretty good. Alright, flip it over, check our symbol. there's some that came through and it actually did a nice seal as well and I'm just gonna squeeze that down and on I'm not even gonna put any there it feels like it's a pretty good seal as it is okay so now we need to test it one of the things that I, I didn't mention that I liked about this piece here is that with this uh, uh, shape here, uh, you can have different size uh, hose that you stick on to uh, if you're using a vacuum or a stronger pump or something. I'm just going to use a regular shop vac, and so we'll see how that does. But first, we we'll need the bottom, and in order to see how well our vacuum is doing, we're going to have a test subject. The uh, peep. I've got a peep here who's going to be my test subject. And what happens when you create a negative uh, a vacuum, when you create a vacuum, the peep will actually start to expand. So as I'm sucking out air, if I see the peep expanding, then I know I've got a good seal. If not, then my next problem will be uh, figuring out how to better clamp the sides here. But we'll see how it does as is. So what I'm using is just a regular shop vac that you can pick up from, from any regular store. And what I'm going to do is this fits over nicely. I'll hold it over and let it just suck away. And I'll keep an eye on our, our peep friend here. Let's see how you, there you go. You can see him in the bottom uh, screen of the picture right there. And so we'll see uh, if this works. If not, I'll have to figure out uh, how to better clamp it, which won't be hard. And, uh, and then we'll go from there. So it's going to get noisy. This is what this is what I was afraid of. As we create the, the seal, and as you can see, it's going back to its shape. So I am losing air in the seal here, um, but it's and that's partly because it's caving in on itself. And if I create too much pressure, this will eventually collapse in. So I'm going to have to. Uh, what I'm going to do is get a piece of wood, uh, put it here support it with a cross piece here and, uh, and use that to hold this upper shape. Now what you couldn't see but I could, uh, the bottom was actually caving upwards into it. Now when we start doing the resin we don't want that. We want that to stay nice and flat and so we're going to have to uh, stick a piece of wood down there um, and actually we can do that with some side pieces coming up, real simple, and uh, that will help keep and support this middle frame. So I, mean, I don't even have to put any holes in. It'll just be a flat board with a side piece coming up and a piece going across that will keep this from collapsing. But it is late at night for me and everyone else is asleep right now. So uh, with the magic of the internet and the computer. Uh, when you see me again, it will actually be tomorrow and I will have cut out the pieces of wood that I need in order to uh, do the bracing on the inside. And then we can figure out, uh, maybe it's because it's caving in and this is lifting up on itself as it's pulled inward that's causing the, uh, the seal to break. Uh, 
because these latches here themselves pop right off because of how how much it was sucking in. But it, it is sucking in. Um, and what I may end up just having to do is with the hot glue, just put a, a bead of glue all the way around on top of the uh, rubber seal here that they provided because uh, then that will create a, uh, a real good seal. Um, I'll just have to make sure I get it pretty level. Otherwise, if you if you have uh, crevices and stuff, you can still have where uh, areas where the air is going to escape out. Um, you know, essentially, we want it so that we can just vacuum out the uh, the bubbles and then keep it there until the resin has cured. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, well, I'm back, and yes, I am wearing the same clothes because I knew I was going to be doing some uh, cutting and it was going to get very uh, messy. Uh, I used MDF board. I had uh, uh, huge pieces of it laying around, and so I measured the inside of my board and measured uh, how high I need it up and to include the thicknesses of the board so that I can create my inner support box. Um, I'm just finishing it up right now, um, so I just wanted to start the video before I completely finish this. I'm going to finish putting in some uh, finishing nails here on the side and I'm going to drill holes so that I can reach in and lift this out and, uh, and then we'll, we'll test our chamber again and see how... Okay, so now I have my support chamber. My inner support. So taking our chamber and again taking our test subject slide this baby in there it's nice and good gives me good support near the top and I forgot about something not quite done all right we got our test subject in there we got our lid it is on there it is snug next we're going to do our test and see how well this holds and if it uh, if it stays airtight sealed. For the purposes of extracting air bubbles out of my resin molds while it's curing, this design works very well. Even though I am not able to get a perfect seal on the container, I am able to get a good enough seal to create the negative air pressure that I need. If you like this video, please share and uh, click the like button. And in the future, I will work on sealing this container off, uh, as well as creating other videos as I go through making the costumes for my family. Thank you.